In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get your Tyranid Neuro Tyrant painted for games of Warhammer 40,000. You'll learn how to paint the flesh, and how we can use glazing, and a few other tricks to add interest. And you'll also learn how to paint all the different colours of armour and carapates. This tutorial is an easy to follow step by step guide, showing you everything you need to know, so by the end you'll have the confidence and knowledge to get your own Neuro Tyrant painted. And if you stick around till the end, you'll learn how to paint those brains and a cool psychic energy effect. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael, and in this tutorial I want to show you how to paint a Tyranid Neuro Tyrant no matter your skill level, so you have a miniature you can be really proud of, ready for use in a game or for display. When getting the Neuro Tyrant ready for painting, because it's such a detailed miniature, I built it with sub-assemblies. This is going to let us get to those places we wouldn't normally be able to get to if we had fully assembled it. Something I would do is dry fit this crest piece so we can paint it along with its carapace, but remove it once we need to fully assemble it after painting. I've also chosen to undercoat everything with Wraithbone spray, which helps us paint bright and vibrant colours like its flesh and those brains. Now we have everything built and undercoated, we can get started. But before we do that, I do want to thank the channel members and Patreons, who very generously support Tabletop Ready and make these tutorials possible. You can also support the channel and the content I make by giving the videos a like and leaving a comment. I really love hearing about your own hobby. As well, throughout the tutorial, all the paints and brushes I use will be shown on the screen as I use them, and I'll also link them in the video's description along with any other equipment you see me using with affiliate links to where you can get them. Finally, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters, so it's easier to follow along with, and the first place we're going to start is with the basics. I want to start the tutorial by getting all of the base colours painted first on the Neuro Tyrant. It's a very complicated looking miniature, and just doing the step first can really help simplify it and make it less intimidating to paint. It also gives us an opportunity to get ahead around the basics of applying paint to our miniatures. The first base colour we're going to paint is Wraithbone, and this is for all those fleshy areas. And I know we already started with a Wraithbone undercoat, but you'll find that the colour from the sprays doesn't really match the colour from the pots. So painting a base colour first gives us that colour we actually want, rather than relying on the coloured sprays. It also gives us an opportunity to get to areas we may have missed with the spray. And to make sure we achieve best results when painting our miniatures, we can't overlook the basics starting with thinning your paints, and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first, giving us more control over how much paint is deposited. When you're ready, make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any area you've already painted, so we don't create any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. After you're done covering up an area, because we thinned our paint, you'll notice it hasn't covered very well. But that's okay as we can repeat the process and paint another layer. We want to paint in multiple thin layers to build up to a solid colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before painting another one. It's really important to practice these very basic fundamentals as it's really going to help make the difference to achieving nice looking miniatures. So now we've got our first base colour painted, we'll have a better understanding and feel for our paint so we can move on to getting all the other base colours painted. The next colour we want to paint after our wraith bone is pink horror for any joints and gives left flesh for those fleshy areas around its head and these nodules on the end of the tendrils. Let's then switch to flayed one flesh and paint a light flesh tone for fleshy areas surrounding any brains. If you're having trouble deciding what details to paint a certain colour then we can use reference especially if we're trying to achieve the same or similar look to an existing scheme. To paint the carapace, we want to mix an equal amount of Abaddon Black and Nagaroth Knight together to give us our base colour. Remember, we always want to use multiple thin layers to achieve a strong colour we can work from. The reason we want these solid base colours is because any shading, glazing and highlighting we do later will contrast better and stand out more. If we have patchy areas with uneven finishes, it can be very distracting. For the inside of the carapace where it's darker, we want to use Galvor back red. For the brains, we want to paint different base colours if we want to match the box art. 
the larger more blue colored brains our base color wants to be temple guard blue and for those more paler green brains our base color wants to be an equal mix of cyber bright green and deep kin flesh our final details we want to paint are all the claws using a bad and black and whilst we've been getting all of our base colors painted if you're like me then you will have likely made some mistakes and gotten paint on areas we wish we hadn't that's okay though because we can take this opportunity to neaten everything up and clean up any mistakes using our base colors and once you're done making sure we're happy with how everything's looking we can move on to getting its flesh painted and learn about all the different techniques we need to paint our neuro tyrant honestly if you're new to painting or looking to improve then just working on getting all your base colors painted first and making sure everything's neat and tidy is a great place to start. This builds confidence and gives us experience with the brush ready to learn more advanced techniques later. In this section I want to show you how we can paint the Neuro Tyrant's flesh and how we can give it character and make it more interesting. Now we have all of our base colours painted we need to start working on bringing out all those details, creating definition so our Neuro Tyrant doesn't look so flat and to do this we're going to start with a wash. To make our wash we want to thin down some Volupus Pink Contrast with 12 parts Lamy Medium. Thinning the contrast with Lamy Medium this way dilutes the strength of the contrast so we get more of a subtle finish on our light flesh colours. And I have a pot of this wash ready to use on all of my Tyranids so I'm not mixing it every time which gives us a more consistent look across our collection. When you're ready, we want to apply this all over the areas of flesh we just painted and you want to use enough so it covers these areas comfortably. Even though we do want it to flow into all the recesses and shallow details, try not to let it pull too much in these areas as we really do want to achieve a subtle effect with this wash. And you'll find we need to continually remove excess wash as it dries as it's such a thin wash, but this is easily done with your brush. A wash is a great way to create definition and more organic features and miniatures with softer details because of how it dries. A wash will create a lot of subtle tones and softer transitions helping to achieve a more fleshy look. Using a wash can make things look a bit messy and affect the vibrancy of our base colour. So the next thing we're going to do is use a glaze on the more raised areas to lighten them back up. This is also going to help bring out all those different shapes making details stand out more. The colour we're using is Wraith Bone, and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down with twice the amount of water making it more transparent, which allows more of the colours and tones on the layer underneath to come through. We want to apply this in even thin layers, and where we want to build up the colour more on raised areas, all we have to do is apply another thin layer. You really want to take your time with this step as rushing it, we can completely ruin the different tones the wash created in the flesh. And when you're done with this step, you'll see how just this wash and a little glaze into light and raised areas has created our definition and made things much more interesting. Because we're painting a larger Tyranid monster, this gives us an opportunity to create even more character with our washes and glazes. The first thing we can do is learn to create gradients using our new glazing skill for any fleshy tendrils. Let's start with the Galvor back red glaze and apply this so we're working the glaze towards the end of the tendril. We can smooth the transition even more using a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from, working in the opposite direction. So here I'm using a Wraith Bone Glaze. When you're happy with how that looks, continue our gradient getting darker using a Barrack Knar Burgundy Glaze. Something else we can do is actually use our Tyranid Flesh Wash we made earlier in the same way we use a glaze, with even thin layers gradually building up the colour. So now we know this, let's apply this over the gradients we just created to help soften that light to dark transition even more. We can use our wash on other areas as well if we want to give the other areas of flesh more interest and definition. Glazing is often seen as a more advanced technique which is often used by more experienced painters. But it's a very achievable skill and it's worth taking the time to practice because of how powerful it is in creating smoother blends, tonal variation and interest across our miniatures. Now we've learned about glazing and using washes, I want to move on to talking about highlighting and I want to go into some detail about highlighting because like glazing, 
is another important technique to learn if we want to elevate our painting. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. The most prominent way of highlighting and the one we most associate with it is the line highlight and it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on. For this technique it's a great idea to have a brush you vibe with that you like to use and I would keep it separate so it's always up for the task when needed. Again we want to thin our paint and remove excess on some paper towel first which is going to prevent those thick blobby lines. When you're ready let's use some white scar to paint thin lines along edges and raise details to help draw attention to them and to help define the shape of things. I'm not doing a lot of highlights at this stage as you don't tend to get many hard edges on squishy fleshy areas so I'm really just picking out the obvious edges and details. Then after you're done highlighting with white scar let's use some flayed one flesh to highlight these areas of flesh we painted with kids left flesh. For me highlighting has to be one of the most important techniques to learn and practice because not only does it help to improve the look of our miniatures it also teaches us better brush control and hand-eye coordination making us better miniature painters overall. When you've had some practice painting thin lines for your highlights we can use the same skill and brush control to paint veins using Galvor Back Red, working their way out from our gradients. I want to finish this section painting those lighter fleshy areas that connect to the brains on our Neurotyrant. As well as the wash these areas were given to start with, we can apply some Druki Violet which is used in the same way as our Tyranid Flesh Wash. After the shade is dried, we can lighten up any raised areas with a flayed one flesh glaze making sure not to lose any of that interest created with our Druki Violet. And if you wanted, we can also paint some veins around those fleshy nodules using Galvor Back Red. I know we went through a lot in the last section of the tutorial, but you should now have a better understanding of all the skills and techniques we use to paint miniatures and it also means you should now know what it is I'm talking about moving forward. For this section, I want to focus on painting the different colours of carapace and claws, learning about the different kinds of highlights we can do. We already painted our base colour for the main carapace using an equal mix of Abaddon Black and Nagaroth Knight, but let's just make sure we're ready and neaten things up if we need to. The first highlight we're doing is called a chunky highlight, and for this we want to mix an equal amount of Nagaroth Knight and Screamer Pink together. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so it can still be seen once we've done our other highlights after this. Paint this along all the edges as well as on all the raised details. At the same time as painting this chunky highlight, let's create some texture, painting these lines along the more prominent edges of the carapace. This first highlight will really help to bring out all those different shapes of the carapace. Now we're moving on to an edge highlight and this is very similar to the line highlight we did in the first part of the tutorial. For the edge highlight we're using Jean Steeler Purple and this is painted along all the edges and details again but within all those chunky highlights we've done. To make this easier you can angle your brush and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For places you can't do this we need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. And this also includes painting more of those texture lines within those thick lines we've already done. Now it's time for a finer highlight so we can make some edges more prominent and stand out more and for this we want to use Dechala Lilac. The last highlight for our carapace is called a spot highlight but this involves painting dots of administratum grey on corners and points of the carapace to really bring out those details even more. You're probably thinking that all these steps and techniques that I'm showing you is a lot of effort to get our miniatures painted and you'd be right but I want to show you what's possible and you should only ever do what you feel comfortable doing. To finish the inside area of the carapace let's first give it an overall wash using Norn Oil to give it some definition. When that's dried we want to do a chunky highlight using Corn Red. We then want to use Bugman's Glow for our edge highlight. Then after this we're going to do a finer highlight with Kizleth Flesh. 
and to finish let's do a spot highlight using flayed one flesh on all those corners. With our carapace done we can move on to getting all those claws painted. Let's start with dark creeper for our chunky highlight, thunderhawk blue for the edge highlight, for the finer highlight we want to use some femrisian grey and then blue horror to paint those spot highlights. I know all this highlighting can be very daunting but it's okay to not be very good at something when we're first learning a new skill and it's going to take a lot of time and practice to build that confidence and feel comfortable highlighting our miniatures. I want to finish this section painting those teeth. Let's get a base colour painted first using storm vermin fur then wraith bone to highlight. Now those teeth are painted we only have those brains to paint which I want to show you how to do in the last section of the tutorial. So we have two different colours of brain that we want to get painted, a more vibrant blue colour and then a much softer paler green colour. Let's start with a more vibrant blue brain first and I want to begin by showing you how to do a recess shade. We're using Sotec Green and this is painted directly into the recess detail. We want to use a recess shade here because it won't affect our base colour like an overall wash. When you're happy with how that's looking, let's paint the raised areas with Baharoth Blue. We can now work on creating lighter areas with an equal mix of Baharoth Blue and Blue Horror. Then continue lightening areas more in the centre with Blue Horror. The last thing to do on our brains is a spot highlight using White Scar. I now want to show you how to paint a cool psychic energy effect which is really going to impress everyone who sees it. The first thing to do is use Inky Pie Darkness to paint consecutive rings coming out from where our brain is going to be. And the best thing to do first is rough in where these rings are going to be. We can then use our Abaddon Black and Nagaroth Night Mix to neaten things up. When you're done let's use some Sins of Horus and stipple this around the base of the rings but less so as we move outwards. Continue this stippling effect using an equal mix of Cyberite Green and Deep Kim Flesh and then just Deep Kim Flesh and we want to reduce the amount of stippling we're doing with each colour as well. To finish our energy effect we're going to use Flayed One Flesh to paint an energy lightning pattern. Start with a central line and then paint squiggly lines emanate from this. It's always worth spending that time and effort painting those extra details and cool effects, especially if we're painting characters or larger models. This is really going to make an impact and help them to stand out more. We can now finish up our Neuro Tyrant painting those smaller paler green brains. We already painted our base colour so let's do a recess shade using Sons of Horus. We can lighten some areas even further with a deep kin flesh glaze. And finally we can use Pallid Witch Flesh to highlight. Painting the Neuro Tyrant has been a great project. It's got so much character and it's got so many different kinds of details that we can explore a lot of different techniques with. And once you're done, you'll also have a miniature that really stands out. So let's see how it turned out. Before we see the reveal, I do want to say a massive thank you to Tamo Pino and Dong Dong, who have recently become supporters on the channel. If you want to support the channel as well and the content I make, then you can do that by becoming a channel member or joining the Patreon. Both give you early access to tutorials and you'll be kept up to date with what I'm doing behind the scenes. Our Tyranid Neuro Tyrant is now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. I've also done other tutorials showing you how to get some of the other Tyranid units painted, so make sure and go check those out as well. And if you need some help getting your miniatures ready for painting, or want to know how to get better at highlighting, I've got videos on the channel showing you how. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then let me know by leaving a like, and let me know in the comments below. I really do enjoy making these tutorials, and I hope you find them useful. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.